Then to the other disciple who came to the tomb first went in also, and they and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not know the scripture that he must rise again from the dead. Then the disciples went away again to their own homes. This is the gospel of the Lord. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten and not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father. And he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, Lord and giver of life, proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who is spoken by the prophets. And I believe in one God and Christian and that's not the church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look at the resurrection of death and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated then as we sing our next hymn, hymn number 525.
grace, mercy, and peace be from God our Father and our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. Yes, what a wonderful thing. We finally get through Lent. We've been preparing for this actually for longer than six weeks because we have preparation for the preparation. Yes. It's a secular holiday. That's why I like our cross on the altar, which is the Christ the victor. Reminds us of the crucifixion, but also of his resurrection and also his ascension and his return and his reigning now as our high priest and king. Faith. Faith, we believe, saves us. Faith in Jesus Christ alone, saved by his grace and faith in him. But yet not all believe, and there are those who believed and then have fallen away. I know a dear lady who has fallen away from the faith, and every time I see her, which is rarely now, I try to call her back to the faith given to her at her baptism. The last time I met in person, I reminded her of the story of Jesus, his death for our sins, for our redemption, and his resurrection. And I said, you must admit, if this is true, it's the most wonderful thing in history, the most wonderful thing And her answer was sad. She said, yes, if it were true. <laughs> if it were true, it would be most wonderful. She no longer believed it. But she did understand that the forgiveness of sins, the death and resurrection, all that is a wonderful thing. The thing is, it is true. We as Christians, even on this day of special remembrance of our Lord's victory over Satan, sin, and the grave, I think we may even sometimes take it for granted. We live with it so closely, right? There's this saying in English, familiarity breeds contempt. We become so used to it, right? I mean, all through, so used to it that all through communist times, Bus Ksenia stood on the calendar, and I don't think a whole lot of people thought about it much. Whose resurrection? We may lose the wonderment. We may lose the understanding, the true joy, the magnitude of what our Lord's resurrection truly means for us. What our salvation from sin means. What it means that we're freed from the devil and fear of the grave. What the promise of our own resurrection means for our daily lives. Yes, Jesus is truly risen. First, we witness the empty tomb, as our gospel text reveals today. It's interesting, people say, well, how come the other gospels have more women? Well, Mary Magdalene does say we. <laughs> uh, just because John only mentions one, because she's the one who ran and told the disciples. It's not that the other women weren't with her, they're just not mentioned. Still, not to get too up much in that. We also know that the gospel record shows that Jesus appeared to Mary as she was crying. He appears then to his disciples on several occasions. And even after his ascension, he appears to Paul on the road to Damascus. For those who think Christ is now bound <laughs> physically in heaven. Jesus Christ is truly and physically risen from the dead. God in Christ Jesus took on our flesh, lived among us as one of his fallen creatures, yet without sin, then took on himself the guilt, the judgment, the punishment for our sins. He dies in our place, paying our eternal debt, the debt of all fallen humanity, and through this he reconciles us to our Creator God and Heavenly Father. He then is risen from the dead, victorious over the devil, who can now no longer lay claim to us as sinners. The devil can no longer touch us and claim us as fallen because we are now in Christ. Our Lord's resurrection is proof that we too shall rise. We too shall be raised. This is what Paul explains in the epistle lesson for today. Our faith hinges on very few things. 
things, but key things. First, the incarnation, that Jesus Christ is truly God come in the flesh. Second, that he truly died for us and paid our debt in full, that he truly did die on the cross. It's not some sort of figment. Third, that he truly has risen physically from the dead, and that we too shall truly rise. If we do not believe these things, especially in the resurrection of Christ and our own resurrection, then as the Holy Spirit through Paul says, our faith is useless and in vain. We should know as Christians that the two things, or three things, but the two things that are mostly attacked are the incarnation, that Jesus is just a wonderful guy, a gifted human, and not God, and also his physical resurrection. That maybe he didn't really die, and that his resurrection was spiritual, not physical. These are two attacks that happen even in formerly, or they still call themselves Christian churches, but formerly Christian churches, because they deny the central doctrines of the faith. But today, we all confess this when we confess the creed. So I can assume that all of those here believe these things, believe these truths. But the question is, do we truly live as if we believe them? Do we truly live in our faith and trust that Christ came, died for us, and is risen, and we too shall rise? What does it mean to you daily that you will surely be raised from the dead? Does your resurrection only have some sort of meaning in the future? Sometime later, after you've died and been buried, if this is all your faith gives you, merely hope in the far off future, it doesn't mean your faith is in vain because <laughs> this will happen. But it's not very useful in the present, is it? The devil, our flesh, and the world around us likes to keep us distracted and weak in living our faith. Likes to keep us from truly understanding what it means that we already live eternal life because the promise is sure. The troubles of the world around us, wars, disease, famine, natural disasters, terrorist acts, all these things are horrible. And they work to distract us, weaken us in living out our faith. And of course, as we believers, we pray that God protect us and those around us from these various evils. But we as Christians, in light of our resurrection, should look at these things differently. We should understand that rather than be distracted when we see these evil things happen, even when they happen to us, even when they happen close to us or those close to us, that when God allows the evil in the world to rear its ugly head, this reminds us first that we are fallen, and yes, we need to repent and renew our faith, reminding us how much we need a Savior, but also reminds us of our mission. Because if we take it one step further, the evil that we see reminds us also that we have a Savior in whom we can trust. We have a Savior who has already saved us, and that the evil we see around us cannot truly harm us. Because even if it takes our life in this life, we are promised the resurrection. And we are promised eternal life. We have a Savior in whom we can trust. We have a Savior who is risen from the dead and promised that we too shall rise. And no matter how evil things may seem, no matter how scary the world may become, all these horrible evil things, all the suffering, the bloodshed, the pain, are, are they're passing. They're not forever. Our Lord is forever, His Word is forever, His promise is forever, we're forever, but all these things will pass. All of them will eventually pass away. We are told in Revelation there will come a time where there will be no more tears, and our tears will be dried by the Lord Himself, as 
and there will be no suffering, no more tears. So the fact is also that as many times as God may preserve us from various problems and suffering, and even physical death, we do suffer in this life, even as Christians, and sooner or later, we all die. Physical death. But there's a greater fact than that we will suffer and die. The greater fact is that although our mortal bodies will eventually pass away also, we will be res resurrected to life eternal, given new bodies, eternal bodies. The greater fact is that God has already preserved us through Christ, through faith, through his resurrection, for eternal life in him and with him. Keeping our minds on these, keeping our minds on the assurance of our resurrection and the eternal life, not letting the turmoil of this world distract us from the most, this most wonderful truth, allows us to live without fear, allows us to live as witnesses to those around us of this most wonderful truth, that Christ is risen, we too shall rise, and all those who believe will also arise. All generations of believers shall rise to eternal life with our Savior. All those passing disasters and so forth should not scare us, but rather motivate us and remind us not only first of our mortality and that we need to repent, but also that we should be reminded to call those around us to repent and believe so that they too might rise with us to eternal life. And thus renew also our trust in our Savior and Lord, who has already given us Christ is risen. He's risen indeed. And so now may the peace of the Lord is passed all understanding and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus now and through life everlasting.